I said, I'm becoming the grumpy old man. And he said, well, you know, the last couple of days at the conference. And uh, the fact that he could say that to me and that he knew I'd want to hear that uh, and that I could replay in my mind and go like, oh, yeah, that is kind of that. Mm. Oh, yeah, that is kind of that. You know, I think I think that's praise God. That's the kind of relationship I want to have. You are so intentional about leadership development, pastoral development. How should all, not everyone's gonna have your backstory or the, the ability to have these young men come in or a large ministry like Nine Marks. How should pastors, the average pastor, think about leadership development? Well, I mean, when I started out, you know, we had 500 members with 130 coming, average age of 70, the church was in debt, the building didn't, didn't look great. Uh, so th I think our church was pretty average. Uh, and I got a letter from a guy in England saying he needed to do an internship for his degree he was working on. Could he come do an internship with us? And I wrote him back, this was before email, and I said, like, we don't have one. And he wrote back and said, well, can I just come hang around for two weeks, watch you, and then read a book and write a paper for you? I said, sure. And that, so he kind of came up with the internship, and that's what we've kept doing. We've just developed it a little bit. So I think any pastor could do that. Still two books and, and a paper? Uh, more books and more papers. Yeah, yeah. As an experienced pastor, you've been here 30 years, as you said. You've got um, a, a ministry both to the church and to the, in a parachurch form. How do you keep yourself in a place where people can speak into your life? I require staff to be present at a meeting every week at 9 p.m. in my study on Sunday nights where they say true flattery and also true critical improving things of each other's preaching, including my preaching, each other's prayers publicly offered, including mine, uh, the hymn selection, the service leading. Uh, and then that, that, I hope, is just a down payment on what it's like to relate to me. So, for example, uh, an old friend of mine who used to be my assistant, he's now a pastor in Kansas City. Uh, I was just speaking at a conference in Kansas City, and he and I got alone for a walk when the conference was done. And the very first thing, and I love the fact that it was the first thing, it speaks to his integrity. The very first thing he says to me, and he and I are alone taking a walk, he says, hey Mark, you remember when we were traveling, we were in this one city, and we listened to this older Christian leader that you knew and had a good friendship with, and remember how you said afterwards, how oh, he seemed to kind of just be a grumpy old man? I said, yeah, and then he just looked at me. And I said, oh no. I said, I'm becoming the grumpy old man? And he said, well, you know, the last couple of days at the conference and uh, the fact that he could say that to me and that he knew I'd want to hear that uh, and that I could replay in my mind and go like, oh, yeah, that is kind of that. Mm. Oh, yeah, that is kind of that. You know, I think I think that's praise God. That's the kind of relationships I want to have. That's the kind of relationships I've cultivated. That's the kind of relationships guys around me give me as a as a kind gift. They, they risk my disapproval or disagreement and. You know, because I don't always agree with criticisms of me. Sometimes I think I'm right. And that brother was... My wife says, always confident, sometimes right. And that's a good skill to have, to even cultivate that in your wife, that she can be that honest. Well, I told her when we first got married, I said, honey, I'm going to be hard to live with. So let's agree right now, you can say to anything you want to anybody about me behind my back, and it's not gossiping. You get all the help you can get from your friends in loving me well. And... I'll trust you with that. Why did you think that you'd be hard to live with? Oh, because I know me. You know, and my wife is normal and sensitive. She's a woman. Yeah. You're very passive. Don't have strong opinions. Like you're, that. You're being sarcastic. Yes, that's right. The exact opposite of that is the case. Yeah. This brother that was confronting you in yeah. Kansas City, he's not a part of your church. No. So you cultivated that as a relationship outside of the church. Well, no, he was my assistant. So he'd known you prior. Uh, 15 years earlier. Okay. okay. Yeah. How would you encourage maybe a pastor to have a relationship like that if they don't have it already in their church? Well, I mean, you just have to be that kind of friend to other people. You know, if you start dishing it out to them, they might get the idea. They give it back to you. So if Tom leads in prayer and, and I see Tom later that week for lunch, I say, hey, Tom, listen, uh, the way you prayed I was just not good because you're not having your own private quiet time. You should have prayed we because you're leading us all in prayer to God. So just even a simple little thing like that kind of communicates to Tom that he can speak that way to me. 
It opens up the door. Because he knows I love him. It's, I'm not like ratting on him. I'm, I'm not trying to say, I hate you. You're a terrible person. You can't pray. Get away from me. You know, I'm promoting him. I'm trying to build him up. So he would just, I think, take it intuitively that, ah, then that kind of communication is appropriate coming from me to him. Hey, Pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family, and the church. So if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.